Hey everybody, it's Dustin again with the WebEx Devices team. Now in this video, we're gonna show and demo a new feature that we have, uh, which is coming with RoomOS 11 on your Room Series devices. But what it's going to do is allow you to do the H, uh, HDMI USB pass-through on your Room Series devices with the simple addition of a third party. In this case, we're demoing with a Enogini 4K USB and the 4K uh, Plus device. Um, but with that device and RoomOS 11, you'll have a built-in experience to be able to enable this uh, call from laptop or USB pass-through uh, capability that previously required uh, the macro uh, framework uh, and some special kind of setup, if you will. So in this video, we're simply just going to show you how it works. There'll be a link in here for a technical deep dive, a much longer video, which goes through all of the steps to be able to set this up, as well as the technical um, how you uh, get uh, the cables and, and how everything's actually going to work. So go to that video if you want to go a little bit deeper. In this video, we're just going to kind of show you how it actually works and show you the interface. So let's get to it. So here I've actually got my Windows PC uh, running Microsoft Teams on it, uh, which is what we're going to use for our demo application. Right above me on the right-hand side is the interface of a navigator that I have uh, for uh, a room kit. Now, one of the things that's, that's pretty simple about this, you'll see on the, on the right-hand side here is we have this new button which says Call from Laptop. And I'm gonna go ahead and press that button. When I do that, you're gonna see this new screen come up. And this is a call, uh, kind of an application telling you about it. The great thing about this is it has the instructions for you uh, as to what you need to do to make sure this feature will work. So just like with a Room Kit Mini, you wanna connect the USB cable to your laptop and an HDMI cable from your laptop to the codec so that way we can send video to the codec. Now, the USB cable is gonna be just like with the RoomKit Mini and using, it'll be coming from the NOG device that you have or there's a couple other devices out there uh, on the technical deep dive. We have a list of some other ones that uh, some people in the community have tested with. Uh, but we've partnered with NOG on this particular um, uh, feature right now. But um, this is actually going to provide into your USB port the camera and the microphone from your room device uh, to your laptop. This will allow you to be able to select it from your um, uh, application. Again, in this uh, instance, we're using Microsoft Teams. Um, and uh, now you get the benefit from all of the, the powerful of the video uh, capabilities and the video intelligence, the audio capabilities, the audio intelligence from the noise reduction uh, and everything. So you get all of those advantages no matter what the meeting platform is, all because of you using this device to provide it via USB, like a webcam, um, to your laptop. So once you do the first step, you get everything plugged in. Uh, step two is basically going to show you just like you would do if you had a, a webcam on your laptop, but you go to the application, you launch it, and you make sure you set your speakers, your microphone, and your camera to the uh, room kit devices so that way you can actually benefit from the features that you have in that room. So now you're going to be able to project up to the screen your laptop. So everybody you see in that application will be large on whatever screen you have. And then the audio will come through the room just like a video call would. And the audio that you send will be from the device, that high quality, high fidelity audio. The video will come from the camera on the room system. So you get all the same features like speaker track, uh, the new frames view. All of that will work um, no matter what the application is because it's all coming from the codec and all this is done locally on the codec. So um, let's go to Windows here and uh, let's take a look at uh, Teams and kind of show you how you would very simply set this up. So in Teams, I'm going to go to my settings and they do it under devices. It's different places on different applications. Um, and we're just going to go through here and set the devices we want for the first time so that way it knows what we want it to use. By default, it's going to use the built-in speakers, camera, uh, microphone. If I had a third-party webcam like a, a Cisco a WebEx desk cam or the 1080p camera, I could go in here and do the same thing, select the, um, the microphone from the camera and the video from the camera to give me an elevated experience. Exact same thing we're gonna do here, but we're gonna be selecting the Enogeni device and the room kit. So for speakers, uh, I'm actually gonna come down here and choose the room kit and use the display audio. So that's audio and video coming out of the laptop via HDMI to the room kit. From the microphone, I'm actually gonna select the Enogeni device because it's gonna provide me access to the room kit's uh, microphone, and when I scroll down here, uh, built in and integrated camera right now, I'm actually gonna choose the Enogeni device, and it's gonna show me 
the InnoGenie's uh, camera uh, as a preview here. Now, going back to my uh, navigator here, one of the cool things about this is, is and I'm gonna minimize this app, is it puts the system in do not disturb. This is important because now I, if I'm using this inside of Teams, uh, if I'm using this inside of Zoom, I want to be able to have that system. If someone calls me, I don't want it to um, alert me or uh, or cause the uh, the call to be disconnected or anything. So this is a really nice feature that you're going to have built in. You'll also notice that some of the other controls like call, the join buttons, they go grayed out because they shouldn't be available. If you're using the system for USB pass-through, then it's not available for a video call. So we kind of automatically uh, disable those for you. If you hit disconnect, all of those come right back. Do not disturb goes off and you're good to go. One of the things I want to show you though is as we talk about the, the camera intelligence, I'm going to go to my settings and go to my camera. So not only do you have the ability to do all of these uh, great um, uh, camera um, settings such as speaker, the new frames view, um, or the, um, excuse me, uh, the uh, uh, group view, but I've got manual selected here because I want you to see in the preview on the left hand side, um, I can manually move my camera. So if I want to zoom in or use a specific mode, again, if this was speaker track, it would still work the same way. Best overview, frames view. Um, whatever I do with my camera here is actually going to be sent to the application and therefore the far end as well. Same thing with, uh, go back to my settings here, my microphone. So the Babel Labs integration we have with noise removal, that's also going to apply, um, which will give you a much superior on-device experience sent to the application. So you don't have to worry about the application's um, you know, enhanced video features or its uh, attempt to do uh, noise filtering. You can turn those off, free up some resources on your device, and let all of the video processing and all of the, the hard stuff that the computer would have to do, let the codec take care of it because it can do it much better than any laptop could do. So going back to this, uh, the other thing I want to show you is, is I can tap down here at the bottom to bring my uh, screen back up. One other cool thing you have is the ability to obviously mute. When I do that, it mutes my system. My system, as you see up here, shows that it's muted. Um, so you get kind of that same look and feel with the red lights and everything syncing, including your little um, audio pucks if you had those. Um, you don't have to do this. You can obviously do it from the device itself. And the technical deep dive, we show you how you can actually remove that button if you want to remove it for confusion or whatnot. Um, and of course, you've also got your self view here, uh, which you can turn on on the device and uh, be able to see it on the screen uh, to be able to make any adjustments that you may need as well. So all in all, this is uh, pretty much in a nutshell. I, I joined my, my meeting. I now have all of those same capabilities. Uh, great feature. I really am excited about it. It's currently in beta for anyone that is running RoomOS 11. So if you have a Room series and you're part of beta, beta.webex.com, go ahead and uh, uh, put your device on beta. Look at the technical deep dive if you want to know how to get this enabled or check with the beta program to see uh, the instructions for the feature. Give it a test. Let us know what you think. Um, but this will be coming to RoomOS devices near you. Uh, running RoomOS 11 very, very soon. I also want to mention that if you have a RoomOS 10 or a legacy device like an MX, you can still use the macro-based method. This will not uh, replace it for everything. It's just um, you know older devices that aren't running or not capable of running RoomOS 11 will still have to use the macro. So this is going to be for your newer devices uh, on RoomOS 11 only. Hope you enjoyed it. We're very excited about it. Um, subscribe below. I've got a lot more videos coming out uh, over the next couple weeks showing some exciting features that we have coming uh, over the summer and through the fall. Um, looking forward to it. Subscribe, like it, have any comments or questions, put them down below, and uh, we'll see you next time.